what I'm here to talk to you about today is uh, unperformance. And uh, if you just say that word in your mind a couple of times, unperformance, unperformance, kind of sticks in your throat. We, we live in such a performance-oriented, high-performance-oriented life, right? So uh, I'm here to show you what it takes to unperform and give you a couple of examples of uh, why I might be somewhat of an exemplar as to what unperformance can bring to your life. I'm always uh, observing things like Harpreet was earlier and uh, trying to get uh, interesting musical instruments because music is a part of what I do. And uh, somewhere in Uti, I came on a shop and I saw this and it was like, wow, what is this? No, it doesn't. It is hollow, so maybe. Sweet sound, right? But man, those tribals really knew what they were doing. This is no bird caller. As it turns out, this is a combination of a martial art, a bird call, and the most unperforming instrument you could ever find in your life. Is the stage going to hold? <laughs> the takeaway for me from this, besides what I just did, was nothing is as it seems on first look. Very important as a lesson when you want to be an unperformer like me. <clears throat> My droopy mic will help me show my next amazing instrument. Wow, that's quite a droop for a tall guy. All right, so look at this. And if the camera can just sort of focus on this for a second. Beautiful as it is, and you guys can't really see it too closely like I can. It's a Vietnamese jaw harp. And it has a real story, amazing story actually. Vietnamese jaw harps, if one can get them open from the rather complex binding, are really something else. Can you see it? There's a little sliver of uh, brass. Well, as it turns out, this brass comes from the bombs of the Vietnamese war that the children pick and bring to their dads and the local smelter who takes this instrument of death and destruction and makes it into a vibrant, literally vibrant instrument about life. Now, okay. It's all part of being an unperformer. I have no expectations whatsoever. <clears throat> So the Vietnamese jaw harp, ladies and gentlemen, from a bomb to music. Joha. Thank you very much. Beautiful. The mic's working with me. For me, this instrument represents transformation. Absolute, utter power of transformation. And if it can happen without, it can happen within. We live in a fractal world. And it's always good to observe patterns because whatever is happening on the outside, at whatever scale you may observe it, is completely and totally feasible within. So my own journey of unperformance started a long time ago, and I'd like to give a shout out to my, my long-suffering mother to have a son like me, because uh, I first I was trying to figure out why, if, everybody, if anybody asked me uh, to perform, 
I would feel uh, like that's absolutely not what I wanted to do. Not in a reverse psychology sort of sense, but in like a donkey, you know, resisting being pulled kind of sense. And I always knew it was the word. It was the word that made me not want to do it. And when I finally dove into language, and I'll come to that in a, lit a little bit later, I realized that to perform is perform as per a specific form. And if all we do is go as performs, then all you get in life is more form and more form and more form, which typically, <laughs> right? Thank you. And more form means structure, and structure means stricture. And stricture usually means a premature passing. Unfortunately, what's happening to our bodies is the same thing. We're living tighter, squeezedier, living in you know, narrow and narrow cubes and cubicles. So this really doesn't work for us too well. And uh, I must have, uh, I really had my own sort of unperformance uh, epiphany as it was, almost at the age of 40. But I had a lot of formation happen to me before that. So uh, outside of mastering the wind, I'm sorry, I should have brought that up earlier. That guy on the, on the right is me. The guy in the white uniform, believe it or not, is me. Yeah. Long way, huh? I'll show you, I'll show you a little uh, series of photographs as to why, but look at that. Yeah. Form, man. I look so happy, don't I? So this is actually 26 January in Bangalore, exactly 20 years ago. And I was the governor, and here I was. So uh, life actually took me to the US for a little bit. And uh, that's where I started actually finding my freedom a little more. Uh, and it was with amazing experiences like this, where I met this gentleman on a beach. I realized that juggling would somehow make me a more balanced human being. And I just begun, and this young guy, Chinese speaker from some you know, Midwestern state, made me feel like a king juggler because of his skill. Right? But people like him were examples of what you can do if you decide to break the stricture. So this is me in my last Silicon Valley job, you know, looking at time passing really slowly and figuring out what is it, something's wrong, man. You know, another five years and I'll be over the hill and far away. So I thought maybe I should try some plastic surgery. That is me, by the way. And uh, that was a little hard to reverse, you know, and to get my refund for that plastic surgery job. But uh, no, I'm kind of joking, but it's coming back here. I came back as the CEO of a mobile software company. And then somewhere along the way, it was like, ah, I finally found it. What was it that I was looking for all this time? It was actually the breakdown of everything that I believed made me who I am from the outside. So that I could actually find out what I was within. I found that all the limits that are put on us are from the outside. And that if I chose to ignore them, then they didn't exist. Right? So uh, part of my journey, that's a very interesting slide, the next one. So part of my journey, a two-fold journey, one was to discover my body, and one was this deep dive into language. Language told me many things about what I should be doing and should not be doing. Uh, for example, my mom still doesn't believe me, but the reason I didn't want to do my lessons, because they were lessons. I wanted to be a moron. All my life I wanted to be a moron. <laughs> Wouldn't you? I mean, if somebody asked you, would you rather be a less on or a moron? <laughs> I'm the world's first self-declared moron, ladies and gentlemen. Please join the club if you can. And then I realized that there were other words like this, like retire. I don't want to retire. Tire, be tired and then be retired. Obviously not perform. And words like convenience, very, very dangerous words. And I, since I'm running out of time a little bit, I'll speak to you about this if anybody wants to know. But that's a really deadly word there because the word venue in the middle means coming together to do great harm. Think about how we're running our lives, coming together to do great harm. So, uh, you know, I, I, I started giving up the way I dressed. I mean, I, I was the CEO of a company. I could have, you know, I was in the Navy. I could have been a Commodore or an Admiral today. But every time I felt discomfort or deep discomfort, I just took a dive and I leapt off. And there, there came a time on my 40th birthday when I died with no safety net at all. And that was kind of the, the, the dive that has finally brought me standing on this stage today, like a little black hole or a wormhole tube. <laughs> what you get from being an unperformer is freedom. And the other biggest thing that you get is that you get to be yourself. 
you know, all of us are 99% nurture and 1% nature the way we live. But when you give up these strictures and these structures and you forget all these things, first, the first thing you realize when you be yourself like me, like this is my own dress code, my own dress style, I go to any business meeting, anything like this, because this is who I am, you realize that people actually begin to appreciate you for who you are. They are not looking, everybody looks for some excitement that somebody can bring to them, right? So this is what I found in my journey as an unperformer, you know, that I didn't want to be as per any form, I broke the forms, I questioned everything. It leads you to question everything. You lose fear when you question everything, right? Because everything is possible. So the loss of fear, the finding of yourself, there's no better place than this to be in the world, trust me, right? So uh, I'll close with a little bit of an, a genuine unperformance on my guitar. I'll just take a minute. I spent about 30 years trying to be a, a rock star. I didn't even get as far as Nimo did, you know. I was hacking with chords and trying to figure out what all this was. And then I finally realized that I needed to set this free and I needed to be free and then we would find our common interaction. And then maybe the music that was in my bones would come out. Thank mm -hmm. you.